I guess just we should maybe put this evening's screenings into a yeah. bit of context because in miniature they sort of uh, show the difficulty you faced and the decision that was made to ask different directors well, to tackle different plays or did you allow them the choice, etc. Well, it was very, happen? very tricky because first of all, I, that Beckett Festival was in 91 and then I, we did it in, in, the bar, in, in Lincoln Centre in 96, we were doing all 19 of them. Um, and then we did it at the Barbican. And then we had literally somewhere between 40 and 50 invitations uh, around the world to do this Beckett Festival of 19 plays. And I knew that it would become tired and, and dog-eared and, you know, it would eventually keep dropping down in quality. So the directors are godlike um, when it comes to film. They're not godlike in the theatre. The writer is the god in the theatre. Um, in film, the director is the god. As Mr. Friel said, if I wanted to work in film, I'd have been a director. And he's so right. So it's very difficult when you're dealing with an, an estate that is so tough and so tight um, and so prohibitive to then go to directors, and I'm thinking like all 19 directors, um, and each of them an ego bigger than my own, and, and to say to them, you cannot cut one word of this. Because even Martin Scorsese and the best directors in the world, they write something and then they say it's not working in the edit, so they have to cut. So, so I decided that to try to get right, um, people to direct and not cut, I, the, the plan was to go to writers who directed. So I asked Tom Stoppard, um, Harold Pinter, David Mamet, um, Colin McPherson, um, so I was just, uh, Anthony Mingala, anybody who was a playwright who would have that understanding, that's where I went first. The thing about Beckett, or, um, Sam, as I knew him, as a, but the thing about him was that he he didn't trust people, and he was right not to. He was a he was a he was a Puritan, and you know Hugh Kenner said about him was that he was the most careful writer of the 20th century, and I love that word careful. And I think that he didn't want people to put happy days into a hairdressing salon and do all that, so he he contained everything as much as he could. However, when he directed himself, he changed things. And when he directed in Germany for television with what, where, and things, he changed everything around. When people said, that's not what it says in the script, he said, oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> so it was a case that he could do it, but he didn't trust other people to do it. And he, his lack of trust went so far as putting people into urns so they couldn't move around so much and they couldn't wave their hands so much. And indeed, Winnie is you know, up to our waist and then up to our neck. So he did want to curtail people because he wanted to control it in some way. Um, how would he feel about it? Uh, I don't want to be disloyal to his nephew Edward, but Edward and the estate had a problem with Anthony Mingala's work play. And they almost, um, they were verging on asking me to refilm it. Um, and I had a bit of a big argument, and I'm very fond of Edward. Uh, I think of the 19 play is the most successful, I have to say. Um, and when dealing with all of the directors, and those great directors, and um, all of them very smart and intelligent people, but I think Mingala got it better than everybody else. You know? I, think that, I think that film is like a car crash. And uh, it was Anthony who, who worked out for me very, very clearly that a pause in the theatre, when you're sitting in a theatre and the lights go down, a pause becomes pregnant and meaningful and you all become in some way closer. But he said when you're looking at a film and there's a blackout, it means the film is broken. It doesn't mean it's a good thing, it means it's a bad thing. And that's why he had all that sense of um, and he worked it out very, very carefully. And he, he also understood that what we were looking at is these sort of um, disembodied souls in some sort of limbo or purgatory waiting, um, the old voices of the dead. Um, Beckett cleverly could only put three on stage. 
by, with blue screen, I think Gala could put an enormous amount on stage. And so in that respect, I think Mingala used film um, brilliantly. And, and when I was dealing with all of the 19 directors, they knew more about film than I did, and they could defeat me with that, but I knew more about Beckett than they did. But I have to say, I think <coughs> Anthony Mingala got me on both scores. You know, he was so smart, and he was so brilliant, and his loss is a great loss, and I think his film is the best. And I think, I think Sam would have loved play. I really do. He was um, and remains a hero of mine um, in every way. He was a man who was humble. Um, he was a man who shunned publicity, genuinely shunned it, not as a trademark. He was a man who loved the work loved actors. In terms of the gloominess and all of that, he did suffer from depression. Um, it's not easy to wake up every morning and realise you're Samuel Beckett. Um, and it's not easy with all that goes with that, the letters, the requests, the, all of that. Somebody had said in 1999 at a talk, why do we give so much to Beckett when he is so bleak, so pessimistic, um, nihilistic almost? And the answer was by the Irish novelist John Banville, who said, you know, nobody is nihilistic when they write so beautifully as that. <laughs> and there is, um, and I know I've used the word earlier, I'm a missionary, but he wrote absolutely beautifully. It's perfect. I mean, you've all heard Crap's last take, that is a piece of work which you can either add to or subtract. And how often can we say that? 